Hello and welcome to That British Homestead. <laughs> Today, well, we've got a load of things to do, but we're in the Lake District. Okay, so we're gonna go through the seeds that we're growing this month in the Lake District. Let's get started. So, we're down here in the Lake District and I thought I'd take the opportunity, whilst the house is a little bit quiet, or the cabin anyway, because we're staying in a little wooden cabin, um, to go through some of the varieties that we're going to be sowing this April. So, obviously I don't have any of the seeds with me on the basis that I'm on holiday, but I thought it'd be a really great opportunity to sit and have a little bit of a chat. I've got lovely herbal tea, this is peach, smells amazing. Mm. It's not very flavoursome, but it smells nice. Okay, so uh, first off, it's April now, so we'll probably be harvesting our asparagus, which is very excited. As you know, I've grown all my asparagus from seed, so I'm going to be growing some more from seed this year. It saves tons of money. It means that you've got a couple of years until a harvest, but I mean, even if you buy crowns, you've got a year until harvest anyway. Um, black currants need a bit of mulching this time of year. Um, I'm like about keeping or throwing my black currants because, on one hand, I love black currants, black currant crumble. We often go walking and pick black currants and put them into pies and things like that. Uh, but I do have brambles at the allotment, and I find that brambles make the best black currants. I don't know, they're great, especially if they're on tarmac. It must be something to do with the fox's wee, uh, but it tastes great. Now, another job that I need to be doing is I need to be um, protect. Well, you need to be. We need to be protecting our blossoms, peach blossoms from frost. What I've done with mine is I've put like a big. It kind of looks like a ghost, a really badly dressed ghost in my allotment where I've put some crop frost cross around and just tied it around to keep that frost away from those frost blossoms. I'm so excited about peaches. I have a dream and my dream is to get so many peaches that I can do canned peaches. Oh, we love, like canned peaches in our house is like a, a treat. We have them for dessert and we love them. Me and Jasmine absolutely love canned peaches. So if we could have our own source of like sustainable and organic and low sugar peaches that are canned in the winter, that'd make us so happy. We love canned peaches so much. Right, so this time of year you can be planting out your crowns of your asparagus. I'm going to be doing that. The ones that I've grown from seed are going to be going out into the asparagus patch. I might be making my asparagus patch a little bit wider, which is very exciting. I do know. Also, you could be sowing Brussels sprouts, one of Jasmine's absolutely favourite things is Brussels sprouts. We're growing Red Bull and we're growing another variety that I never ever remember that starts with G, but that's very exciting. I think I got both seeds from uh, Premier Seeds, which is a great, I'm not affiliated or anything, but it's a great cheap website for seeds, which I really, really like. Um, buy loads of stuff. I buy from everywhere, but that's pretty exciting for me. Now, cabbages, got tons of cabbages that we're growing for um, summer this year. And the great thing about summer cabbage, because you, you tend to think cabbages for winter, but summer cabbage is so, like I found in my diet, because we try to eat super seasonally. I'm just talking about canning food, but yeah. Um, seasoning for me is like just fresh fruit food, and we do supplement with canned uh, stuff that we store throughout the year. Now, in terms of cabbage, I really like um, when you cut it up and mix it with mayonnaise and stuff, we're getting so many eggs at the moment. Like, I'll show you, right? We took these on holiday. Because we went on holiday and it's me, I take all my food with me so that we can, you know, make food whilst we're here. So I bought three dozen eggs, okay? And look how many I've got left. Now you're probably thinking, that's a quite a lot of eggs to have but left, but we got given <laughs> on one of the first days here, uh, we had a knock on the door and one of the neighbors here, there's lots of wooden cabin things, and they came knock on the door and they were like, oh, we have chickens and like we have too many at the moment 
um, do you want some eggs? And I was like, yeah, because what do you say? They were like, have them. And they brought us round two dozen eggs and I brought three dozen eggs round. So we have about a dozen, just over a dozen left. We eat a lot of eggs. Um, so yeah, that was really exciting for us. We eat eggs every day for breakfast. We've been chopping them up and having them as sandwiches, obviously boiled, um, etc. So that would be a great way of using up some eggs, making them into mayonnaise. We'll be glassing some eggs later as well, which is very exciting. I want e glassed eggs that are two years old. If you don't know what glass means, it means it's... Um, put into pickling lime and the pickling lime is used to preserve it and it works really effectively. Some people don't like the idea of it but I mean I ate them when they were two years old and they were a little bit runny but they were good. So kohlrabi. I really like kohlrabi. I have some to be sowing out this time of year but you can't be sowing the seeds outside now because it has warmed up. It's April. <gasps> almost close to the first frost or last frost sorry um i'm really excited about that our last frost is on well this is the last week of april but i go ahead and count it at the first of may so very exciting that stuff mustard now we do sow mustard we've been growing it in little pots you can go ahead and sow it outside now and if you've never grown mustard it's really good it has a bite to it but the the leaves are beautiful and in a salad, in like a mixed bowl salad, because we grow lots of baby leaves, um, I'm telling you right now, it's so lovely to have and to be able to have that sort of bite to a salad or a sandwich that you don't normally have. So that's really exciting, I have to say. Um, you can go ahead and plant your onion sets now, which are really good. You have two types of onion sets. You've got ones that you do in October, and then you have another set that you can sow in spring, depending on which ones you want. Uh, we've done, gone ahead and done the October ones, so we won't be Pliant, well, I say won't be. Well, I don't never know. Um, but I do have lots of little um, seedlings, onion seedlings that I will be planting out that we planted on Boxing Day last year. They're called crags, crags, crags. They're meant to be absolutely massive onions, so that's exciting to be looking forward to because I quite like large onions when it comes to canning because when you're doing canned fruit, um, you tend to do it in batches. So I do like massive massive batches of tomato sauce and teeny weeny little onions are awful to, to like peel so I want big onions just for that really um, I'm also looking forward to making some onion jam which like caramel I was Cam caramelized onion which is very exciting now if you are going to go ahead and put some um onion sets in it's a really good um idea if you have an issue with birds go ahead and put some netting over them they love pulling them out because they get worms around the bottom pull them out eat the worms and leave them on the side and they dry up so go ahead and cover them if you have an issue with that now radishes can be sown this time of year under conches which i'm awful at saying um i'm growing rainbow radishes which are very exciting because they're very vibrant and beautiful in a salad another one that i really like is called watermelon radish which is just so beautiful it's got a green on the outside and really shocking red in the middle really enjoy that one Another great one is French breakfast radish, like a classic, obviously. Um, it's really good. But one that I do like, you don't have to conch this this time of year, is um, the black Spanish radish, which is round. I think it's got the round in the name. I think it's called uh, black round Spanish radish radish <laughs> i can't remember but they're really good they're really crunchy they're really great they don't store amazingly outside the fridge so you have to pop them in the fridge and they last fine grew them in my greenhouse last year they came huge they're like beetroots and they're really good roasted them up and they were really nice shallots another thing that you can be sowing this time of year we did shallots and shallots of them in the autumns which is very exciting so i'm really looking forward to having lots of shallots as well like I said when when it comes to like small batch cooking like for a meal or something I'm happy to use shallots a shallots of them and I find that a really really powerful flavor which is very nice in some recipes however I like the bigger onions when I'm doing batch cooking I might be wrong let me know spinach is a great one now I'm loving the spinach we're getting about two big bowls of um 
salad leaves every week at the moment, which is amazing because the season has just begun. We're getting them all from our greenhouse. So we're really excited. One of the big ones that I really like is spinach. I find it very... Oh, it's, just, it's just gorgeous to eat. I've also got my perennial spinach that's going to be going in, which is very exciting, but all of that can be sown um, outside now. Um, talk about perennial spinach. Perennial spinach is basically a Swiss chard. Um, Swiss chard can be sown now outdoors under conches to be protected, but it's basically the same thing. I'm so excited about that. I really like the stems of young Swiss chard. I think they're very beautiful. I like chop them up and put them into stir fries and things like that. Um, and it's something that doesn't necessarily get particularly used up, so it's quite exciting. Now, carrots. I've already sown some carrots this time of year. Oh, there's a little rabbit. Run, rabbit. Um, so the carrots that you've sown early, you can actually go ahead and remove the conches from them, which is very exciting. I have got, um, I've sown carrots a few weeks ago. So what I'm going to be doing is a little bit of peeking, see if they've come up, because you do need to cover up carrots. You sow them very thin, and you've got to cover them up with anything like wood. There's always wood on the allotment. Like where, who buys all this wood? Um, wood or, um, one of those, what they call plastic, black plastic sheeted, weave membrane, that's what it's called, etc. frost cloth, and then the germination will be so much better. I'm su super excited about my germination, so I will be removing that. However, I've I've done it so that my carrots are about a foot apart. They only need about six inches. So what I'm going to be doing is sowing in between those either some onions, some spring onions, or I might go ahead and put some more carrots in there. I'm not 100% sure. Carrots and onions work really well together because we have an issue with carrot fly, which is a fly that affects carrots, and we have an issue with onion fly, which is, I know, an onion fly that affects onions but exciting stuff is that carrot fly hates onions and onion fly hates carrots so they work really well together so I'm probably going to go ahead and do some spring onions and just trim the tops until we get to the point where uh, my onions uh, sorry my carrots are fully developed and I'll just pull the whole bed and who knows what I'll put there who knows but I'll probably have something to go in there by the time that they're developed, which will be in about June. So it's like prime time for some winter cabbages or et cetera to go in. So you can also start to sow early varieties of carrots in the open now, which is very exciting. One of my favorite carrots that you can grow now is something called Yellowstone, which is a yellow variety, which is very, very, very good at um at being like very long and thick which is what you want from a carrot also i grew one without it splitting which is witchcraft i know another thing that i'm going to be sowing is my strawberry plants are you going to finish my strawberry planter i've got like five of them for you to do robert five yeah all you need to do is draw holes uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> when are you gonna do it? So I've got a few more strawberry planters to do. Uh, it was very exciting. Bob's going to go over to the allotment and finish them up, aren't you? Mm. <laughs> um, which is very exciting for him and us. Um, so stra uh, strawberries are really good. We've got Cambridge favourites and all joking aside, we do love strawberries, don't we? We like strawberry pie. We like strawberry crumble. We like strawberry wine. Well, we like making strawberry wine, we don't drink. So the strawberries that we grow are called Cambridge favourites. They're really abundant. They produce a lot of strawberries. We're gonna aim for about 300 strawberries this year to be planted up. And hopefully they're all going to be moved out of our home garden because our home garden is going to be used for sweet corn because we can't grow sweet corn over the allotment because of the mice. The mice love sweet corn. Beetroot's another thing that you can be growing this time of year. You need to do it in modules inside to transfer them outside later in probably next month. Now, the, the exciting thing about beetroot is that they're all different colors. We grow rainbow beetroot, which involves a uh, golden beet. I can never say, it. is it chico chicoro? which is a candied beetroot, which is very exciting. We grow sugar beet, we grow cylindrica, bull's blood, 
think there's another one. I think, did I say, did I say sugar beet? Well, if I didn't, sugar beet too. Which are all different colours from yellow to white to deep red, as you know. Um, I find that the golden beetroot is the nicest. I really like that one. Followed by the sugar beet. I like all of them, but they're really, they're my two favourites. They're very sweet and nice. So purple sprouting broccoli is something that we're going to be sowing as well. It needs to be sown under the cover. Uh, we're sowing two main varieties. One's called Rudolph, which is really high productive. It's amazing. And the other one is called Lannister, which is a mix of green and white sprouting broccoli which is very exciting because you don't really get some white sprouting broccoli and I thought that'd be very interesting. So sprouting broccoli does take a very long time to produce. Um, sprouting broccoli you sow it now and you have a um, harvest this time next year which is very exciting. So you could be sowing uh, leeks into a temporary bed this time of year. Uh, we're growing several different varieties. One's called Zub Zero, one's called California, what's it called? One's called Northern Lights which is a very nice variety. Each one is going to be harvested this year. You can grow long varieties. We have one of those which will be harvested in the winter with a very mild climate. Remember, we're only in zone 9A. Um, so that's very exciting for us. So it's time to pot up your tomatoes. My tomatoes are still very tiny, but I will be potting them up as soon as they're easy to handle because when they're easy to handle, it means that you can split them apart much better. I've done two per little module tray and I'll be potting them up into bigger pots so that they're able to grow on before I'm going to be planting them out probably about the 1st of May. So you can also sow your squash, um, your pumpkins. This month now we're growing tons of pumpkins and squashes. We're going from spaghetti squash to, um, was it crowned? crown prince we've got some literally you name it we've got sweet potato squashes we've got mashed potato squashes baked potato squashes um we've got some taffy we've got onion squashes all of the ones to make lovely apple pies to make uh, s'mores pasta and to make wonderful spaghetti ish adjacent meals which is very exciting we do rely quite heavily on squashes when it comes to the winter um squash is a very polarizing subject in our household i love squashes my partner cannot stand them but it's a nice compromise so we eat them <laughs> pumpkins we grow one type of pumpkins i think this one's called max maxi maxi or big boy something like that which is a jack-o-lantern pumpkin um we've got giant pumpkins as well we are terrible at growing giant pumpkins we grow them every year and they tend to be they're like decent size like this which is like maybe like five six kilos uh maybe a little bit more maybe even up to 10 kilos but they're meant to get up to 300 so <laughs> we we grow completely organically and don't use fertilizer. I think that's the issue with it. They need a lot of fertilizer. Now you could have, like me, I've already sown a lot of my purple sprouting broccoli. So I'll be moving that out into the allotment very, very soon, which is very exciting. I've also got some calabrese, which is also called broccoli. I personally call it broccoli. It is the broccoli that you find in the supermarket that isn't the sprouting variety. You can go ahead and sow them seeds. Now it's very quick to a harvest, unlike sprouting broccoli. I personally love sprouting broccoli but calabrese is something that I'd buy in the shop so it's something that I'm happy to eat as well. Now cauliflower if you're already sown your cauliflower you're going to have to fertilize that in some way. I love using blood and fish bone that is great. Um, also chicken manure either that's well rotted from the chickens themselves or I buy it in. I buy it in in bulk and we get 25 kilo bags um, of organic fertilizer. I really like that. I really like how, uh, because it's organic, I know what went into it, etc. Um, courgettes and cucumbers, you can go ahead and sow. One of our favourite cucumber is Telegraph. It's what we call an English cucumber. 
I don't know why we call it that, but we, when I say we, I mean me and my partner have always called it in English cucumber. Um, I think it's where we've traveled and we've seen different types of cucumbers and that's the one that we um, are stuck in our heads. So we call it an English cucumber. It's like a, I was gonna say normal, but what is normal? Um, it's a cucumber that we primarily eat in sandwiches here in the UK. I'm also doing a pickling cucumber. I love pickled cucumber, which we call gherkins. Uh, my daughter as well absolutely adores gherkins. So we're going to try to put up at least six big um, jars of pickles this year. Sweet pickles, love them. We're gonna be doing a lot of hardening up of all of our plants as well, such as uh, onions, kohlrabi. Now, the way I harden off plants is a little bit untraditional, but I go ahead and just stick them out into the world and I will just cover them with cross cloth. So for example, on, this weekend, I'm going to be sewing out onions, kohlrabi, um, broccoli rabe, which only takes 60 days, which only takes 60 days to a harvest so I'll go ahead and put that out um, and I'll just cover it with frost cloth and that'll be done. I bought tons of frost cloth for my birthday this year so it's a job's a good one. So sweet corn at the end of this month I'm going to be sowing sweet corn. Sweet corn is a really important um, harvest for us. Last year we got roughly about 50 to 60 uh, ears of corn. We did have some damage, um, not counting that, like we did have double that, but we lost a lot in mice damage, but we did give them to the chickens, so it's not the end of the world. But um, because of that, we've decided to move our strawberry bed to the allotment. Um, and our sweet corn is going to be at home in our home garden because our home garden is south facing and is beautiful and perfect for that but it also has the advantage of not having rodent damage which really messes up. I really want to can a load of sweet corn because I have so many recipes that I like to add sweet corn into right so what I'm going to do is shuck it I think it's called chuck, shuck, shuck, yeah, shuck, where you go and pull it all off um, or cut it with a knife depending on what you have. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and just store it in like a brine, a very, very mild brine. Pressure can it, because you can't um, water can something that's low acidity, it's very exciting. And I can have it in things like chili, that's actually what I made for, I don't know why I'm pointing over there, I've cleaned up. Um, I made chili for dinner tonight, we have it quite often. I do the whole bolognese, and then you take the bolognese and you make it into chili, mm, with beans and things like that in it. So what I do like to have, um, cans of beans that I've processed myself and I do like to have the sweet corn that I've done myself as well so I can just go ahead and put them in probably the smaller jars I'm gonna go ahead and do and that'll be delicious the one that I'm growing this year I believe is called Swift which is just a very fast variety like that one um, pretty much you can't go wrong with a sweet corn we've also done um, I want to call it the glass, it's called a glass bead variety, but what is it called? Ah, Fiesta. We've also done Fiesta, which is a popping candy version. Very exciting, we love doing that. We actually eat quite a lot of popped corn, um, and we do like making it ourselves, where you just kind of put it into a frying pan over the hob, and you kind of just do this until it starts popping. Obviously with a lid on, if it goes everywhere. We really enjoy doing that because it makes like a nice movie snack, which is very low calorie, but it isn't terrible for you, which we quite like, instead of eating crisps. Um, another thing that I'm going to be growing right at the very end of this month is French beans. We love French beans. Uh, we eat them quite a lot throughout the summer, um, and we do store some for the winter months, but they're pretty much gone. Um, very very early on and then we're going into squash and cabbage and root vegetables and we really really enjoy them being in the freezer and we just pull them out as needed we backpack them um, I'm not going to scold any of my veggies this year I've been experimenting with it and apart from potatoes which apparently you do need to scold or they go black um, they've worked out really well and it just saves a lot of time for me personally so I'm really excited about doing that I feel like they freeze better as well because they're drier and they're not retaining so much water. 
that's how I feel about it. Now, don't follow my advice if you um, don't like the idea of it. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying that's what I'm going to be doing. French beans are um, sold under conches this year. Um, I'm really excited about that. We saved tons of seed from our French beans last year because I bought a packet and I was like, I'm not going to buy another packet next year. So we've got absolutely tons of them going into the ground. I like the dwarf varieties, like for example, Purple Queen, which is a great variety. We've also got one called Sunshine, which is a nice yellow variety and a purple variety, which I really like. Also, runner beans. Runner beans are perennial, so bear that in mind, because they will come up the next year if you don't put them out. Um, and we have one called P Painted Lady, uh, which is really nice, and Emperor, which is great. Um, the issue that we have with runner beans I love runner beans I grew up eating runner beans my nan grew her whole garden and it's one of the things that I remember from my childhood eating tons of runner beans I'm very pro runner bean however my partner and my daughter can't bear them because they're fluffy and they squeak so bear that in mind if you have young children or fussy eaters at home that is something that sadly we eat less of but I will grow some for me because oh it's just runner beans with loads of salt I love them so much and that's because that's how my nan used to make them I know salt's bad for you but they do taste good another thing you can sow and this is something that controversially I've actually started to like which is parsnips I used to hate parsnips like I put I used to hate parsnips but like now we have them when I make any form of stew I make lamb stew it's still cold isn't it when it's cold outside I make lamb stew beef stew or chicken stew whatever meat I have on hand and I chop up a parsnip or two parsnips with some carrots etc um and lentils and things like that and I throw it into the stew and stew it through and it is so nice to have the parsnip you can't taste the parsnip it's not gross or anything or overly sweet and I've really enjoyed that so I actually brought some meat down to do here but I don't think we'll have time to have um any stew this time because I bought too much food basically so you can actually go ahead and start those I have done it where you hold them into a packet and get them to germinate and then transfer them to transfer really well there um, I've also done it where I'm just going to cover it up with a conch and like do the same way that carrots germinate so that's very exciting now sweet corn at the very end of the month you can go ahead and sow them at the very very end of the month um, outside under frost cloth which is very exciting remember that we only have a few weeks now until the last frost which is very exciting but obviously you don't just go oh it's the first of may and just go ahead and woof take out your peppers and all of that sort of jazz no make sure that you are continuously looking at your phone i always for a safe bet with tomatoes or anything that's frost tender not peppers okay not peppers or chili so ignore that this is not advice for them but if it, it doesn't drop below four degrees over a two-week period i would go ahead and plant them out okay as long as it's after the final frost however if it drops below four or um, it's like particularly windy or like a blisteringly sunny I wouldn't go ahead and plant them out or I put frost cloth over the top if it was like I had to um, with peppers and chilies I am um, probably eggplant as well or aubergine however you say it um, I wouldn't go ahead and sow that out until the temperature doesn't drop below 10 degrees at night time uh, once again if it's blustery etc really rainy or whatever um, I wouldn't go ahead and plant them out but I like to choose a a, um, a week where there's quite a bit of rain like fine rain and I like it when it's overcast because then it doesn't stress them out so much and I know that they've been watered in really well but the reason why you don't sow them out um, if they drop below uh, four degrees it stunts them and it really shocks their system and they're stunted for the rest of their lives so it's better to wait Anything else, like for example this time of year, uh, my onions, my kohlrabi, my everything else, I'll just go ahead and chuck outside, cover with frost cloth and be like, you're fine. I'm not, um, I don't like sit there and baby all my seedlings, it's not something I, I personally do. Um, but saying that, if you 
if you're worried, go ahead and do that. Plants will recover, but chilies and peppers, they will be stunted for life. So it's best for them to be kept for now. Also, uh, this time of year, I know that my peppers have started to get a little bit stressed and they're starting to flower. Make sure that you're peeling pulling off those flowers because if you don't they once again will be super stressed and um, it's going to damage their root development okay so make sure that you're pulling off them flowers it feels brutal i know um, but it's best to do that now because you don't want to be transplanting a plant that's also trying to develop a pepper or a chili it's not going to work out well all right thanks for hanging out with me today in my holiday cabin which is very exciting i'm so exhausted because we literally walked up a mountain today we've we'll been walking up another tom mountain tomorrow i was gonna say tomato um so we're very exciting it's bedtime so i'll see you next time bye bye there's a significant orange in my team <laughs> <laughs> right <clears throat> the sun's in my eyes oh, i look like a white douche did you zip up then? <coughs> Seeing. I feel like the camera's pointing too low. Yeah, so do I, that's why I'm changing it. Does my hair look alright? Yeah! I can't think of myself. Yeah, fine. This tea like, doesn't have any flavour. My arse is on fire. <laughs> I'm gonna keep that in. <laughs> I'm keeping that in. It truly is. Are you gonna make a tea? I'll tell you what happened. And it was. Yeah. Be gone. Can I carry on with this? I mean, if you want me in the background awkwardly making a tea. Yeah, fine. Can I use the charger for the laptop? Yeah. I'm going to set that up in the bedroom so that I can... Uh, Why don't you just awkwardly sit in here? Charge my iPad. Spend some time together. This tea is awful. Is it? Yeah. Don't use that one again then, no? Where's the dog? Do you know what it tastes like? Where's the dog? Don't know. Do you know what it tastes like? Right. It's like water, but... It tastes like cheap candles. Mmm. Nick? Mmm? Yeah. Woof, 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 woof! Another thing that I'm going to be doing is sowing carrots. That cat kettle was so loud. Mm. He's very tired because we walked him for six hours over a mountain. <laughs> He's very tired. You lovely boy. Do you remember, I, like, when he first came on the channel, he was so tiny, and now he's huge. He's like a big boy. Mummy loves it, boy. Lovely boy. You used to all be in my videos, didn't you? And when you were tiny, when you were tiny. Mm. Yummy, yummy, yummy.